I'm Lisa Haysha. Welcome to the Legacy Interviews. Today I have Jill Whelan with me. And Jill and my husband actually used to work together. She created, <laughs> my husband created her part on The Love Boat. So she is an actress, a mom, and many other things. And I'm so excited to have her here to discover everything she's been up to and to pick her brain about what it feels like to have been a child star, how she overcame all the negatives that are associated with it, especially when they become adults and how you manage that. So hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good, it's good to see you. Great to see you too. <laughs> it's so funny, yes, overcoming child stardom. Yes. <laughs> that should be a book title. Absolutely, I've met so many child stars who, you know, being a coach and a therapist, yeah. I met so many that are just, it ruined their life. Yeah. And they're struggling to get their life back and figuring out what they want to do or, how did you manage to escape that, or what was your journey? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I just had this thought that just ran through my head when you were talking about that. It's being a child star is almost, well, it's like having your dessert before dinner because you experience the pinnacle of all of the greatest things that are possible as an actor. I mean, you're it. That's it. You're at the place where you can be. And then you either have to sustain it or you have to reinvent yourself and find something else. And there are so many incredible treats that come along with being a celebrity, or not a celebrity, but I guess a you know somebody in the entertainment business, that as a child, um, you, you there's a little bit of reality that you don't <laughs> acclimate to, and then you have to do it later as you're an adult, and it's a little bit it's a little bit harder. But for me, um, getting back to your question, I think. Um, there, well, there's two words that will explain why I'm not dead yet or in prison, and that's my mother. <laughs> okay, tell me about your mom. Uh, first of all, I'm very frightened of her. Okay. <laughs> so I would not do anything that would piss her off because she, she would, <laughs> Lee can tell you, um, he, uh, she's, she is a force to be reckoned with, but in a good way. She was always, um, a, a hands-on parent and I think um, I have taught acting to several young kids and the thing that I always say to their parents is you need to understand that this is a business and you are you are like the, the, the you have to be the shield in front of your child because arrows will be coming at yes. your kid from all different directions and in all different shapes and forms. It might be temptation, it might be money, it might be uh, intimidation, destruction, whatever it is. But you, as the parent, can never be dissuaded by the money and by the fame. And it's those parents who forget that their primary job is to protect their child are the parents whose children usually suffer greatly from being in this business. Because nobody's going to protect the kid. They're going to protect the business side of the kid, but they're not going to protect the kid. It's not their job. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about how you got the part on the love boat and how old you were and what your first couple of weeks were. And then at the end of it, what happened when you the show was over? Um, well, as you know, Lee created the job. Lee Aronson created my character. Um, it was a guest starring role. It was not a regular when it mm -hmm. started. I was doing another show for Aaron Spelling at that time called Friends. But uh, if it was the version of Friends that you're familiar with, I would be driving a much nicer right. car. <laughs> but <laughs> it's uh, the show that we did was it lasted 13 episodes, and Aaron Spelling wanted to keep me on as a contract player, and my attorney didn't want me to sign that deal. So I guessed it on Love Boat. Aaron was great about having his other corral of actors guest on all of his shows, whether it be Fantasy Island or um, Charlie's Angels or whatever it was. So I guessed it as the part that Lee created, the character Vicky, and then Friends was canceled after 13 episodes. And Aaron asked me to come back. I don't know. I've heard two different stories. I heard one story, it's because they got so much fan mail about the relationship between Gavin and I. Yes, that's what I heard. Okay, I've heard that story and then I've also heard that they were trying to garner a younger audience, so maybe it was a combination of the two. Maybe it was a combination, but I heard you got a lot of fan mail. Everyone loved you and that it just worked. Yeah, so, yes. so, so that's how I, I came into it. Um, so you were already working. I was already a, working. So, so the the awkward moments that I think you might be looking for in the beginning, I never really had um, 
because for me it was just great fun. Mm. Uh, when I was much when I was younger, because um, that was about eleven years old. Um, so I'm getting over this horrible nasty cold ah. that everybody has. <laughs> um, when I was much younger. Uh, and doing auditions. I mean, there were horrible moments. For example, I remember being in an audition where uh, a lady was brushing her daughter's hair and she looked over at me and she looked at her daughter and said loud enough for me to hear, well, if all the little girls are as ugly as that little girl, you should have no problem today. Mm. Which was, I mean, here I was, I was not your actress type kid. I had, my mother had me get a permanent wave a little afro from the beauty school down the street because my hair was flat. I was in the pool all the time. It was the only way that there could be something yes. with some shape to my hair other than me looking like you know a, a street boy. rat, yeah, right, yeah. or a boy. And I and I did look a little bit like a boy. I had freckles and a round face and a you know a turned up nose. Um, so I I was I came out of the audition and my mother never went on on auditions with me. She sat in the car because she said if you're going to do this, this is your thing. You go, I'll take you. And I that's like it. that, and really gave you the independence. Yeah, of yeah. And and so when I came out of the audition, I I went to the car, and she said, "What's the matter?" And I told her the story, and she started laughing. She goes, "Are you kidding me? You're gonna believe that, really?" She said, "Then you know what, honey? This isn't the business for you, because that's gonna happen every day, and if you don't have a tougher skin, you'll never survive." And so that was really my worst t experience. What happened in that interview? Did that affect your performance in the audition? Um, I don't think so. Good. I don't okay. think it did. I don't remember, but mm -hmm. uh, that at that time was that sort of halcyon time when all the stars were aligning and I was just getting everything. It was one of those things where it was a, traje a trajectory that you, you can't, pay for you can't it just happens you know it's just the way it is and and I, I think you know a lot of it is that do what you love and everything will follow kind of thing at that age I wasn't thinking about making a paycheck I just wanted to go in there and have fun that was it that was my MO because that was fun for me making believe was fun for me what made you want to be an actress how old were you when you said I want to uh, act and actually started taking classes and auditioning. I was eight years old, mm. and we were doing a production of, uh, my mom was a nursery school teacher, and during the summertime, she needed a place for me to go because I would try, she would take me with her to nursery school, but then I would try to teach her class for her, and I was those kids' age. So my mother would say, we're gonna do Play-Doh now, and I'd say, no, we're not, we're doing dress-up. And it just got a little too yeah. <laughs> difficult for her to control her class. So she thought she needs something creative, um, and in the summer uh, production in the where we lived, there was a production of The King and I, and she, she was a very, my mother loved theater, so she knew, she was familiar with the script. She said, oh, King and I, there's lots of kids in that show, it'll be like summer camp. Great, I'm gonna have her audition. So she had me audition, and I, and I got into the show, and a lot of those kids were working in San Francisco, because this was the Bay Area in Northern California, and I asked them how they did that, because this seemed like fun, and they said, you just send your picture into an agent. And they gave me their agent's name, and they just said, just send a school picture in. So unbeknownst to my mom, I did. And the agent called my mother, and my mother said, I don't, I didn't call you. She goes, well, we have your daughter's picture. And my mother found out that I sent it in. And that's how, that's kind of how it started. It just, it was something fun to do. It was like if somebody, you know, somebody said to your, if your kid said, uh, I want to take horseback riding lessons, that, that appeals to me, or whatever. And it just, um, since then, it's really the only thing that I know how to do. I've tried a lot of other things. Yeah. I'm not good at a lot of Are other things. Are you an only child? No, I have okay. a brother and a sister. My brother is a cameraman, and my sister is a personal assistant. Oh, okay. For so. a big uh, publishing firm in New York. So, you know, it's, it's, this is such a numbers business. It is. It just is. I just feel like the more you, you hit it, and the more you, that's, that's how it works. Um, when I was younger, coming off Love Boat, oh, that was the other part of your question, coming off Love Boat, because everything happens so easily. How, long, how old were you when it? 19. 19. Yeah. Okay, so that's a pretty long run. Yeah, it really was. Okay. Um, you know, everything from the start had happened so easily. Were you homeschooled? Or no, did, I went to. You still went to Buckley? I or? went to, yeah, I went to Buckley, but I had a tutor on the set. Okay. And so we would combine everything. And, okay. Um, but but by the time Love Boat ended, um, 
it's a very strange place to be as a very young adult. I mean, you know, 19, so still a teenager, uh, coming off of a show that, number one, has been on for so long and did so well for so long. We were always in the top 10, mostly in the top five. Um, because you come off of the show and as is the nature of show business, you're only as good as your last project. So once your last project is over, then it becomes, what's next? And as a 19-year-old kid, you're like, what do you mean what's next? I, I, I never had to hustle before because it just sort of all Yeah, came. and if you wait too long, oh, why isn't she getting work? Then you become a has-been. Right. It's like, right. oh, that was, you know, she's not working now or you have to start all over again rehearsing and exactly. auditioning, not just, oh, a name. Yes. Give her the part. It's yes. back to you're a new actress to a certain degree. Yes. If you wait. Exactly. And it, it but but for somebody who was in it as long as I was, but had one job. I mean, it might be different for somebody who had a bunch yes. of different jobs, but I had one job. So there was no education in how to hustle. So I didn't realize the significance of it nor the importance of it. And um, for me, when Love Boat was over, for example, just to use your husband as a it, I would never have thought of calling him and saying, hey, you know, if you have anything, let's let's get a meeting. Let's you and I have a meeting and think of something maybe that you could create for me or we could collect. I would not no sooner do that than put my hand in a meat grinder because for me that would be imposing on somebody as opposed to se to thinking about maybe relationships that I had made along the way. There were a ton of relationships I'd made along the way, but I I, I didn't want to impose. I didn't you know I didn't know I didn't know how it works that uh, instead of thinking. I have something to offer you, so let's create something together. I was thinking, hey, could you do me a favor? But that, you know, that that's not the mindset to be in. And in this business, you somebody else is just going to rough run roughshod over you, because you know they'll do that. But I didn't. I didn't want to do that, so I never did that for a long time. And um, it took me. It took me a long time. It took me moving out of Los Angeles and moving to Pennsylvania and then realizing, oh, I do, I do want to work. I've had my two kids. I want to work. This is going to be really flipping hard to do this in Pennsylvania. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, how am I going to do this? Boy, and then I had to get real creative. And then I learned about hustling because there's a lot of hustle in Pennsylvania. Um, and then uh, I was able to come back here to work with a friend of mine on a podcast, uh, Mark and Brian, Brian Phelps, who was, uh, for people who might mm -hmm. be watching who don't know who it is, he had a number one rated uh, radio show in Los Angeles for 25 years. And so he and I had always been wanting to work together. So we, he had me come out and we started this podcast together uh, when, when he left KLOS. Um, and that's when I finally came back and was like, oh my God, it's so much easier when you're here amongst the the place where this work happens and in Pennsylvania where you yes. really got to get creative. Um, so, so that's kind of what happened I think for me is that I, um, I, it took a long time for me to learn how to navigate this business again because it is a lot of work. There is a lot of stuff you have to do that I never even knew that you had to do before that that you know, I, I know now. Did you ever get into drugs or alcohol while you were um, on the show? Oh no! Did anyone? Never. Nobody gave it to you. No. 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 Okay. No. My mother was there all the time. The whole time. So it wasn't time. even an interest. You weren't like no. a bad girl who wanted to sneak in. No. Rebel. And it's funny because um, Laura Dern and I were uh, classmates. We were in the same class. And at, at Buckley. Okay. And uh, she and I were working all the time, so we never. You know, those things were going on, and we went to a reunion not too long ago, and it was so funny because one of the couple of our friends, who, who we still love, were, were saying, yeah, we were always, I remember we were always up on the back of the hill smoking pot. And I was like, you were? Nobody ever invited me. Right. <laughs> and she goes, do it. yeah, she goes, you didn't do that. <clears throat> really? And, I mean, I don't do it now. It's, it's t three of the worst things that I could ever imagine being tired paranoid and hungry are not the things that I need. Yes. <laughs> That's not, not good for me. So I'm, it's, I don't enjoy that. But, um, but that was the thing is I was working all the time. I was too busy. And I, I, I think that that for a lot of kids is, is a good sort of a secret 
with kids is that if, if they're in a position where they recognize the value of something that's important to them that they don't want to lose, I think it would be a great deterrent. In other words, you know, if a kid is an athlete and he, he knows that there's the temptation of drugs, but he loves what he does so much more, that's a great deterrent. Oh, absolutely. But how do you address the fact that so many child actors become drug addicts or alcoholics? Because I think, again, they are in a position where they don't have good role modeling and they don't have limits. Because the problem, because it's, it's a very perfect storm that happens all the time and it's incredibly predictable. You've got the kid who wants to be an actor, you've got the parent who gets attracted to the fame, the kid becomes successful, the parent doesn't want to say no, nobody else in the team is saying no, and they create this monster who's not been told no, who doesn't understand that there are boundaries. And when kids don't have boundaries, they don't feel safe. When they don't feel safe, they get insecure. They're in a business where it's all about insecurity because you are selling a product, which is yourself and your brand, but yourself is personal. How do you not take rejection and everything else or bad reviews or anything? How do you not take it personally? Because it is personal. It's the only business in the world that is so personal like that other than the music business. Um, if you don't have boundaries, you don't have somebody there to teach you about failure, about coping with failure, a parent who is there to be the person who doesn't want to be your friend, who doesn't want to hang out with you, but who wants to be there to say, no, this is not acceptable. No, you do not get to spend all that money. No, you get an allowance. And you get an allowance that I will deem for you. And you don't get more. You can hate me all you want but I'm still your parent. You don't need another friend. You know, that's what these kids need. And, and that's they how also, your mom was. Yeah, and okay. they also, they need a parent to stand up to the producers. Because when my mom was first on the set, on the TV show Friends that I did, one of the executive producers came up to her and said, um, if there's, and I was right there, if there's anybody on this set that Jill doesn't like, just let us know and we'll have them fired. And my mother said, laughed at them and said, ha, let me tell you something. If you ever give my daughter that kind of power, especially again in front of her, we will be out of here faster than you can write a next, the next script. She was like, don't you ever. That's, and, but that's the nature of the business. It really is. Unless you, it, it takes a very strong parent to parent in this business because it's very So you're very saying tempting. the kids that fell into that trap of um, self-destruction well, they look did at Lindsay not Lowen. Have, yeah. Look at her mother. She yeah, was partying her with her. Yes, okay? and Drew her Barrymore's father, mother. Right, and they were all partying with her. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure you think. Cor the two the, both of the Corries. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think is that, you know, uh, Britney Spears' father finally. Yes, reeled her in. Reeled her in a bit. I mean, but it took an awful lot to yes. get to that point. Yes. Um, the other one, the poor, oh my gosh, the, um, Amanda Bynes. Yes. I mean, there's, eh, it's hard, you know. So you're saying if you get thrown into this business, because a lot of people no watching book. this who has kids and say, I want my kid, every parent I know wants their kid to get into business. But that's a problem. Like, oh, I've got to get her problem. in, I've got to get her in. There yes. is the problem. And a lot of it's because of the economy. Right. And, and that's a problem. Yes. You're, you're, you know. So what's your advice to them? What do you want to say why, to them? You've got to first of all ask, why do you want your kid in the business? We need the money, first of all, well, to then give that's her a better life answer. for her college. And she's so cute, or he's so cute. But what does a kid want? Yeah, I, some do, some don't. If they yeah. don't want it, sorry. Yeah. Work harder. Yes. My daughter is a natural. She's just yeah. such a ham, and just she's just extremely charming. Yeah. And she was on the set a lot of Big Bang Theory in mm -hmm. Two and a Half Men, and everyone kept saying, we got to get her on, we got to get her on a show. And someone even wrote a part with Ava, and she said no. Yeah. And I said, why don't you want to do it? And she said, when I'm 16, I want to do it. Right now, I want to be a kid. Okay. <laughs> when somebody tells you who they are, <laughs> believe them. You like, know? But you could do both. No, I don't want to do it. Well, that, that's... And I said, all right. So I keep checking in. Are you ready? And she said no. That's like my, my yeah. nine-year-old, um, somebody stopped him in the mall one day, and I'm sure it was one of those stupid things, but it was like, oh, um, can you say Disneyland is the best? Let's just hear you say that. And he looked at her and he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, start, I'm like, dude, seriously, I'm, I'm a child actor. You got, it's, it's just do it. It's in the genes. You have something to prove here. He looks at me and he goes, 
I don't want to. I go, please, baby, just, just do it. You could make a lot of money. He goes, okay. Disneyland is the best, whatever. Good. <laughs> so he had no interest. And the, and, the, and the woman, she walked away, whatever. She was trying to be nice. She walked away. And I looked at him and I said, dude, you, do you know how much money you could make? As a kid actor, do you know how much money you could have for college? He goes, well, I know how I could make more money. I said, how's that? He said, if I were producing it. And I was like, okay. Great. Excellent. Can't argue with that. <laughs> Write your mother in, would you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, if they're not interested, yeah. there's no reason to force them. Or they them. know something inside them is not ready. They know. Kids yes. have great instincts. They sure do. And, and we, we, we quell that so often for whatever reason, because it's our misgivings or it's our dreams or whatever it is, uh, y they have to be able to, to, to find it themselves. And if they don't want it, uh, I understand college is expensive. I get it. I'm paying for two of them. But it's your kid. You know, you decided to have children. Yes. And when you decide to have children, you have to decide with all of the trappings that come along with it. Yes. It's not um, all roses. <laughs> it's, it's like not. so much work. And if and you want to be a hands-on parent and a good parent and really guide them, it's like takes a lot of time. That's it. A and lot it's, of energy, a lot of money. And it's very hard mm -hmm. as a parent because in one sense, you have to basically quit your career to go with your kid yes. every day, to parent your child, protect your child every day. But then, okay, so you do that. So there's your income gone. So now what do you do? Okay, well now you have to be the manager of your kid. Okay, so now your kid is your boss, essentially. Yes. Because if you're going to take a paycheck from it, which, you know, there's lots yes. of different schools of thought, but if you've quit your career, of course. You, you, they have to survive somehow. Um, and there are laws in place to make sure our parents don't take too much. There's the Jackie Coogan law and so on and so forth and things like that to protect kids. But that's a sticky wicket too. But you can't put your kid on a set and then you go back to your job and have somebody else there. Can you really trust somebody else parenting your child for moral values and things that you want your kid to have? Mm -hmm. you, you know, so there's, it's really hard. I, I tell all of my kids that I used to teach and stuff, I just have your kids do community theater until they send their picture into that agent themselves. Community theater, don't give them more than they're asking for. Just because they say they want to be an actor, don't get their headshots. Yes, and that doesn't mean anything. They don't know what that entails. No, and even if they're nine years old, I want to be an actor. Don't get their headshot. Let them figure it out. Until they figure it out and say to you, here's what I need, I need da 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 let them go do community theater. Let them let them take a let them take an acting class. Mm -hmm. If it's that important to them, kids will find a way to explain to you what they need to do. I mean, my God, I can't run my computer without my kids. So they're smart. They'll figure it out. And as the longer you can sort of stave yes. off that part of the business, the better it is for everybody. Let them get an education. So how was it being a star and having siblings? Um, what was that dynamic like? Well, I can tell you my third of the dynamic, but you'd have to ask them on the other side. Um, when I started working, before we took the series, my parents and myself and my brother and my sister sat down and my parents said, look, you guys are part of this decision, meeting my brother and sister. And if you guys are not cool with this, we'll turn it down because we're a family. And they were both like, we have to give her this shot. If she doesn't have this shot, it may never come again, blah, 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 blah. So move forward, um, you know, it was hard, I think, because we were, my mother and I had to come down here most of the time and my sister hadn't finished high school yet. So um, it, was, it was a struggle for her. Uh, and she was in San Francisco? Yeah. Okay. It was a struggle for her. So my mom had her move in with my grandparents because she was, my sister was very close with my grandparents and you know, they're wonderful people and they loved her and nurturing and so, so that worked out well. Uh, and the minute she graduated from high school, she came down here. So we were all together again. Um, but my sister and I are extremely close now. We weren't as close then, mainly because we didn't live in the same city, but it was a struggle for, her, for my sister. Um, my brother was fine. You know, he and I were very close. He moved down here. I helped him get into the camera union down mm, here. Okay. You know, it's all very nepotistic. Yeah, yeah, of and all course of that. it is. But, um, 
I helped him get into the union, but he was very talented and he was very industrious. Um, and he's still a cameraman today. Um, so he was he was okay. My sister had a harder time. You know, she was also the middle child, which has its own yes. um, challenges as well. Um, but we are we are the best of friends today. She, my oldest son, she was the first one to touch him. She caught him coming out when I gave birth to him. Mm. So we're we're very close, and my children are extremely close to her. So, oh, that's wonderful. You know, in so the there end, might have it been a few challenges, out. but yeah, in the end, it worked out. I mean, listen, everybody has a cross to bear, and everybody's they do, got challenges. They do, and, and that's... I understand that if the mom's taken away to you know give attention to right. your sibling, and they're a star. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot. You know? Yeah. But everybody's got their patina. Absolutely. I say so. So, what advice would you give to your younger self? If you oh, were like my, nine years old or eight years old right now. If I were nine or eight years old, well, first of all, I would tell myself to hustle as soon as Love Boat was over. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I learned that eventually. I mean, I did figure that out. Um, uh, gosh, I would just, I would remind myself to have a healthy sense of self and make sure to encourage um, that the, most, impor the imp most important judge of my character is me, not anybody else. Um, probably, probably that, and not to be so judgmental of myself. I think, I mean, that's the nature of the business. So Absolutely. It's a constant mantra, you know, every day. Yes. What did you do after the Love Boat? Um, after Love Boat, I went to college in England mm -hmm. for a while, and then I came back to Los Angeles and still said, no, nope, I still feel like a has-been. I'm moving. So I moved to New York, and when I was in New York, I had a friend who said, um, she worked at Madison Square Garden in production, and she said, you know, if you really want to empower yourself, because I went there and I was doing a lot of theater at Naked Angels and different places up there, um, she said, you should learn the other side of the business. You need to learn production. It's only going to empower you. And so she hired me, and I started working at Madison Square Garden as a runner. So I was getting Gladys Knight's um, vitamins and feminine products <laughs> and bringing <laughs> them to wonderful. her dressing room, yeah. which is funny because five years later she had been on the love boat. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean? Yes. So it was like a crazy juxtaposition. Of, but, but I didn't have an ego about it. I, um, I really didn't because I thought this is really, I loved the idea of running around with two walkie-talkies and um, I created a position for myself there that was never there before which is a liaison between uh, film companies and the garden because the garden, you know, they, they knew live performance contracts and things like that but they didn't know the rules for TV when they started doing the Essence Awards and the ESPY Awards okay. and MTV, yes. I helped produce the, um, the tribute to Bob Dylan and all that stuff. They didn't know how that worked. So I did. I mean, I just grew up with all of that. So I knew all those rules and uh, double t uh, overtime and golden time and how long lunches were and all of that stuff. So I, I did that. And then um, I met my future ex-husband, <laughs> got married, got pregnant, had my 19-year-old, um, got divorced very quickly after that. We were married for about a year, year and a half. Was he in production also? No. He okay. was... Uh, we're still not exactly sure what he does. Okay. Yeah, we're not sure where he is, nor what really? he does. No, he has not seen my son since my son was one and a half. So, which is probably a better thing. He just vanished? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was your attraction to him? Um, he was charming, you know, all of the okay. familiar trappings. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I got a, a fabulous kid out of it. Yes. And then uh, my second marriage, uh, I got my second. It seems like every time I get in, I get married, I have a lovely parting gift. So now I have two boys. Um, one is nine, lovely one is 19. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's a whole nother learning curve that, that, you know. Yeah, what advice do you have for women with marriage or oh, anyone God. with marriage? I have so much advice on what not to do. Yeah, would you say wait <laughs> later in life or early so you could have children? Or I, you know, I think that it so depends on the individual. I mean, I really do. Um, 
it's, you, it, uh, there should be no law about what age is the right age to get married because we all mature differently. Yeah, and so we, what would you look for? What would I, what, what am I looking you, for now uh, Yeah, I'm single or, again? Or anybody looking for marriage who hasn't been married that well, you've looks gotta, up to you. If you, you. First of all, you so have to listen to your instincts, number one. I mean, you just, uh, it's so important because those little tiny flags that are in the back of your head that you just kind of put back in the bookshelf and know that you're going to have to pull out later on and examine are going to be so much bigger once you've made the commitment and all of that. So don't avoid what you see because you only see what you want to see. You yeah. want to see the positive if they're charming and sure, this and that. Sure, because romance like, oh, that's is so fair, exciting. But whatever. Yes. You know, yes. but um, and the other thing is uh, with my second marriage, we didn't live in the same state, so it was a long distance romance. And that is really difficult because the minute you're living day to day with a person is when you start to actually know who they are. Before that, every time you're together, it's celebratory. So if they're an alcoholic, you don't know it because... You're just having a good weekend. Or right. Having, yes. That's right. You don't realize that it's every day is a good weekend. Right. <laughs> um, which was my situation. Mm. Um, so you, 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 that's, you, you gotta live in the same city before you make any kind of a commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you're having doubts the day of the wedding, much easier to pull out then, than go through the whole thing. But, um, I mean, I don't regret, I would do everything all over again to get my kids. I would, my kids are fabulous. And um, I might not have picked the perfect fathers, but my kids are great, you know. And do um, they have good, um, Paternal role models? They do. Okay. Fabulous. That's... My dad is spectacular. So they're very, very lucky to have him. And he is very active. Um, and so that is a wonderful thing. And my mother is, is very, I mean, we're a very tight-knit family. So that's part of the reason that you turned out okay also, just the tight-knit family on top of having a strong mother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Now, do you raise your kids the same way? No. My mother and I have completely different parenting styles. So what's styles. your parenting style? Well, my parenting style, my mother, um, who is just, I mean, she is just all about giving. There's just, it's, it's all about going out and taking care of her kids. That's her focus in life, which is, is wonderful. Um, I will say one of the, the thing, you know, because as you raise your daughter, I'm sure you know, you feel that, oh gosh, you know, that's one thing I just, that I really had to overcome, which, you know, we all do the best we can. My kids are going to have to overcome things that I do. It's certain. Yes. Um, finding a healthy relationship will probably be one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I feel that I've had to overcome from, from my childhood is um, my mother always wanted to feel needed so it was always nobody's going to tell you the truth but me as opposed to the truth is within you listen to it do you know what I mean yes and so there were a lot of years of self-doubt um that may backfire a little I always tell my daughter that she's like what should I do about this I said you know you know everything. Your body knows everything of what's good for you. And she's like, Mom, my body says the sugar is good for me. <laughs> I'm listening to my body. Well, yeah, I know. I'm like, that's Dang. manipulation. Dang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give you power. I'm trying to give you, you know, what do you think? Well, what do you think? No, you know. Then she'll tell me about whatever. And oh, yeah. She's using it for food. My body's oh my gosh, saying it so needs funny. this. <laughs> Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's manipulation. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but you know that that I would say that was my um, that's the thing that I, I need to work on, and I do struggle yeah. with that those tapes in my head because what that translates to, or when she would say, "I just want you to find somebody who can take care of you. I just want you to find a good man. I see all your friends and they have these men, and I just want you to find somebody who can take care of you," which translates to me, "You can't take care of yes. yourself." She so still says just, that to Oh, me. God, yes. Oh, she totally does. But I'm not in that position because I married two people that I was hoping would take care of me. And neither one of them did. You know what I mean? And, 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 Do um, they help financially? The second one? one does. The first one never has. Okay. The second one does. Um, and you but, never tried to get 
alimony or child support? From the first one? Yeah. I didn't want that tiger by the tail. You didn't even, okay. Mm -mm. Yeah, I know several people who are going through that right now. Yeah. I okay, was, so you just let it go. Yeah, that was a better choice with that one. Um, but uh, the feeling of being in a situation that you can't get out of because financially you can't yes. afford it is an awful place to be. And um, so to be able, for me to have been able to have gotten out of that, now perspective looking now, I, I don't ever want to not be able to buy my own dinner ever again. And I never will. Um, so that is, that's one of the things that I kind of have overcome from that tape in my head as a child. And that was never my mother's intention. Never, because she's incredibly strong. But I think it came out of a place of her wanting to feel needed, that her children always needed her, you know, to keep them close to her. Yes, I think is what that was. It was never anything but that. If she, if she knew that that was how I interpreted it or how it played out for me, it would kill her to know that because that's not at all. That wasn't her intention. No. Not in, not in the least. Um, and, and so, so that was, you know, that would be a thing. Interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And each kid is so different. So how you raise each one is very different. I'm sure like all your children are different from each other and they oh, need both different boys things. Are. Yes. Both boys are, you know, one is, is highly creative and dry sense of, they both have great senses of humor which is so important to me because I got a sense of humor yes. is everything. it's everything it is everything. everything yeah um and they both have great senses of humor but the little one is much more academic than the older one but the older one is so creative and it's so beautiful so you know they're just they're 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 different in that way the younger one I never have to tell him to practice piano he got up this morning really early and all of a sudden he sat at the piano you know it's a it's a different kid the older one just, he writes beautifully. Um, you know. Well, what is your life like today? Uh, it's very busy. Mm -hmm. um, I am a room parent, a den mom. Um, I am also on three or four committees at school. Um, my older one just moved back in from, he was living at his fraternity house. We tried it for a semester. Believe it or not, I don't know if you would find this interesting, or make the connection, but somehow when you live in a fraternity house, it's not conducive to good study habits. <laughs> really? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But I figured that out, and so did he. So he's home this semester, um, which is wonderful, because I love having him home. Uh, and he goes to school locally, so that's great. Um, but uh, other than that, work is just, you know, great. It's been really wonderful, all those little seeds that I have been planting have started to sprout and so I um, I just did an episode of Real Husbands of Hollywood uh, with Kevin Hart's show and that went great um, and I'm doing another show next week then I'm going away um, to the on a cruise ship to do my show um, uh, a, on a gay charter cruise so I'm so I have a, a cabaret show that I do uh, which is really exciting. fun yes and so it's basically kind of a um, uh, like a musical memoir. So I sing, yes. but then I tell stories about Love Boat and everything else that I've done. So I'm doing that. And then when I get back from that, I'm doing another show for ABC. Um, so you're still staying very active. In I've the gotten active. back okay. into, you know, I hired a, a great publicist mm -hmm. and a, a great manager and a great agent. So now people know I'm back. They just didn't know where I was for a long time because I was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're busy raising your kids yeah. and doing your thing, which was important. And now yeah. you're going to reap the rewards of that. Yeah. And now it's your time again. Yeah. Well, yeah. somewhat my time. Yeah. I still have my nine-year-old. Yeah. But, you know, he's That's, had a good, solid yes. foundation with mom at everything at school every day. All the time, um, and so uh, you know now's now's the time for me to 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 do what I love and get back to it. Yes. So it's happening. It's really good. I'm yes. on top. I don't yes, know of what. Yes. <laughs> well, well, what do you want your legacy to be? My legacy. Yes. Oh boy. Um, God, I don't even know what I want for dinner. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you look on your life, what do you want people to remember? What do you want to be known for? Um, I suppose I would want to be known 
as somebody who did what they loved, shared it with others, um, raised her kids to be secure with themselves and compassionate human beings, um, and somebody who made a difference in other people's lives, I guess. Mm -hmm. That would be it. Because it's not going to be for math, I can tell you that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful. <laughs> yes, so that's it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Oh, with us thank today. you for having me. Yeah, I think it'll be really beneficial for a lot of moms out there. Oh, and good. Child actors, yes. Leave your kids in school. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Jill. Thank you.